There is also a commercial window of opportunity that this is a novelty for Villa. It's their first roll of dice into the Champions League and maybe their prices will settle. They... So do you agree with 100 quid? I don't agree or disagree with it. I think the guys that own Aston Villa have taken enormous amounts of credit for the huge investments that they put into the football club. I used to love sitting with the fans in fans forums saying, it's our club, it's our club together. And then you might want mummy putting the season ticket prices up so that I can generate more revenue for our club. Oh no, we don't want that. Oh, so it's my club now, is it? Simon, last weekend, many people online flocked to buy tickets for the Oasis reunion tour. Fans were waiting hours in the queue, and it soon became uh, it soon came to light that available tickets were being taken down and then reposted at higher values, with the scheme being termed dynamic pricing. Yeah, surge pricing. Yeah, yeah, surge pricing, if you like. Well, now, the Football Supporters Association, the FSA, have warned against greedy owners in football trying to exploit and exploit supporter loyalty in the English leagues. Uh, the statement says, uh, never underestimate the potential for the most greedy owners in football to try and import terrible ideas from other industries. And no doubt they're suggesting that dynamic, dynamic ticket pricing falls into this category. Um, uh, the Football Supporters Association, the head of communications is Michael Brunskill, and he joins us live. Michael, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you doing? Good, thank you, Michael. Um, you, you talk about uh, the potential for the most greedy owners. I, I presume here you're parking your tanks on Valencia's lawns in Spain because Valencia have announced plans to try it out for their matches moving forward with the support and technology of La Liga. So they're all for dynamic pricing. What's your take on it? Yeah, we obviously saw that. And there was, there's been examples in US sports. I think it's pretty common, isn't it, over there? And obviously with the high profile um, news of the Oasis tickets, you know, I was speaking to someone whose uh, son had actually been in the queue and then was expecting to pay 150 quid. And then suddenly it was like 350 quid. And he's had a fork out to cover the rest for his son. So it's obviously in the news generally. I think in a football context, it's it's not something that any Premier League clubs have announced they're going to do yet or anything like that. But I think there's a wider worry there because it's on the back of a summer where like 19 out of 20 clubs have put up their season ticket prices. There's been a general sort of attack almost on concessionary prices and young adult prices. So I think while there is no example of a club doing this in England yet the wider context is the fear that you know clubs are just generally pushing up prices and um so it's something we're definitely keeping an eye on and I think that it's this idea of dynamic price or surge price in football is something that the vast majority of supporters would push back on I think I mean dynamic pricing Simon are we going to see this in football first off what do you think of it um I don't think very much to it quite frankly um, I think ultimately, <clears throat> if you look at <clears throat> the Premier League, <clears throat> most of the Premier League clubs operate with about a 90% season ticket revenue. So there's no dynamic pricing around season tickets because people have bought, have bought their tickets and have priced in. <clears throat> You're then talking about the casual fans that pick and choose their games when it suits them and the games that they want to watch. Um, and with that comes the commercial reality of an industry that... Um, uh, eats through money at a raise of knots. Uh, and greedy owners is an interesting classification because I'd like to point down the list of how many of these football clubs are actually making money. And that may well be because they're stupid and they pay too much money for the players and the players' wages are out of control. But everyone's a contributing factor to that because the fans want to see the very best players on the pitch. They want to see their manager being effective and if he isn't, they want him out of the job and the compensation paid up to him so he can go out the door and they want other players in there. And it all comes at a cost. And as long as that cost is out of one person's pocket and not another's. It's like people asking for tax rises. The people who are asking for tax rises, if, you're, if you ask them, do you want some tax, to pay some extra tax? Oh, no, 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 I want someone else to pay it. Same with this situation. No, we can't have surge pricing on casual tickets that are bought when people turn up to the games that they want to go to um, because we don't think it's fair. It's reflective of an industry. And the government coming out and making observations about what they're going to do. Well, why don't you get hold of the airlines and do people like that when 
poor families are having to take their kids out of school and get fined by schools because they can't afford to go on holiday because the airlines profit during the summer. Why don't we do meaningful stuff rather than virtue signal to populist markets like the football market or the concert going market because two million people are trying to buy Oasis tickets. I don't really have a fundamental problem with surge pricing in football as long as it's not hugely Mickey taking. Is that fair uh, to you? Is, is that fair? Michael, uh, Sam think, shouldn't have a. I mean, Sam is a former owner, of course, but doesn't have a problem with so-called surge pricing. I think some of the points Simon makes obviously valid in terms of the way football revenue just runs through football um, without really, um, certainly, without really benefiting supporters who are constantly asked to pay higher prices. When in reality, those prices actually don't do that much to subsidise the transfer fees and wages, as we know the vast majority of that revenue comes from media. I think in terms of the... Dynamic- oh, don't underestimate that, Michael. I mean, don't underestimate the quantum of revenue that's been generated by football clubs for attendances now. It's in the 20% to 25% region of people's turnover. So that's not we, a, not insignificant I, amount. I had a, it's certainly not insignificant. I had a look through the accounts last year at a variety of clubs, and the ones we looked at... From Man City, I think it was about 13%. I think about 10% at Liverpool, 7% at Lakes of Brentford and Nottingham Forest. So it's not insignificant. Mm-hmm. But if they put those prices up by 10%, it's only sort of 1% of their revenue. So it's not going to help them over the PSR threshold. But it could, a 10% ticket rise could really put off um, or could make it unaffordable to some to some supporters. But in terms of the wider thing, just to come back to dynamic pricing, which I think was a good, fair point from Simon in terms of like that, Maybe 90% of, say, tickets go to season ticket holders or away fans. And if you have that 10% spare, the worry would obviously be if that did just go to dynamic pricing, um, that's really going to price people out who could only afford those like one-off tickets or who are part of membership teams and might not be season ticket holders, but they suddenly find that a ticket which would have cost them whatever, you know, 40, 50 quid, which yeah. is still high, suddenly could cost hundreds. And that would be a, a real worry because that would feel like clubs were playing to the global market, you know, trying to get in one-off visitors yeah. to Premier League and really capitalising on that. So I think that would that would be a worry. But it is it is important to see as well, to be fair to the Premier League and the clubs, there's been no announcement from a domestic club. There, there hasn't. Risen. But, Michael, then but, you look at... But it's just in the wider context yes, of high prices. Yeah. You know? what, what does the Football Support uh, Association's uh, take on Aston Villa? Aston, Aston Villa, um, the fans haven't reacted too kindly to the news of the cost of the Champions League tickets. It could set many back to almost 100 quid a go. Um, now, it seems that Villa are charging a lot more than others. The cheapest adult tickets for Villa's games against Bayern Munich, Bologna, Juventus, Celtic have been priced at 85 for non-season ticket holders, almost three times that charged by Liverpool. 30 quid for their Champions League home matches and more expensive even than Arsenal's fixture. Uh, the, the Arsenal's fixtures. They, they come in with their price at 74 quid, 30 pence. Villa going for 100 quid. Very expensive. I've spoken to a Villa fan this morning who was already um, worrying about how he was going to pay for it. Um, obviously, across those three games, you're starting to drift to the price of it being a you know, season ticket at a championship team or something, isn't it? It's equivalent pricing, albeit for three games. Obviously, everyone gets it. Standard football's better. It's an amazing occasion. And that does mean that they probably, well, almost certainly will sell out, won't they? Um, but it doesn't always make it right. Um, I mean, I'm I never thought I'd be on here talking to Simon about ticket prices and paraphrasing Jurassic Park. But just because <laughs> they could doesn't mean they should. And I think sometimes football could remember that as well. You know, during COVID, there was a lot of noise about, you know, football is nothing without fans and all mm, this sort of stuff. Yeah. But then it's, it sometimes feels like that's just been forgotten about. But then the flip side, now. Michael, then the flip side of that is the economics of your football clubs that you have ownership for was not supported by anybody else besides the owners. Because if the owners decided to, no, 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 we're not paying this and we're not paying it because the players didn't want to help, the players didn't want to reduce their salaries. So the football clubs that you guys love for 18 months were bankrolled solely by owners sitting there, not being able to play football matches, not being able to generate revenue, having broadcasters take money back from them. And so everything has a, has a commercial reality to, to it. I do agree with you. I do agree with the principle of just because you can doesn't mean that you should. But there is also a commercial window of opportunity that this is a novelty for Villa and it's their first roll of dice into the Champions League and maybe their prices will settle. So, maybe they... so do you agree with 100 quid? 
Well, I, I, I don't agree or disagree with it. I think the guys that own Aston Villa have taken enormous amounts of credit for the huge investments that they put into the football club to turn it around into a Champions League winning side. And I've, I've want to find the balance, not to be detached from reality. Because I used to love sitting with the fans in fans forums saying, it's your club, yes? It's our club. It's our club together, right? Well, then you might, won't mind me putting the season ticket prices up so that I can generate more revenue for our club. Oh, no, we don't want that. Oh, so it's my club now, is it? So it's only my club when it's time to funding it, but it's our club when it's my money that you're spending. There has to be a balance. Yeah. And I think if Michael's suggesting that, is Michael? a fair balance, then there's yeah. a fair balance. It's all about balance, Michael. Yeah, I think that's a fair point. I think, um, like we say, the, the TV revenue that the Premier League particularly generates, you know, you're looking at about 10 billion, I think, aren't you, across a three-year yeah. deal. I think that there has to be fact that in that match going fans are part of that, for want of a better word, product, you know, and if you don't have exciting, vibrant looking stadiums, with in particular younger fans, because you are younger fans really do help drive that atmosphere. And you look at some clubs like say like Forest, obviously a great club, but then you look at if you're in an 18 year old at Forest moving up into the um higher age category, your ticket could jump up from like 190 quid up to I think 850 quid. And I'm not that sure that's affordable for many 18 year olds. Yeah. And it's that sort of age sure. range that I think yeah. really yeah. important yeah. and football has to really think about okay. how we keep those people in grounds while they're in education, low-wage jobs, apprenticeships, etc. You know, I think that's really important. 